Well, welcome everyone to Mining for More. I'm Becca Mowry here with Dina Merchant, and we are jumping back into the book of Mark, Mark chapter three. It's been very exciting. It's always very exciting it's though very for exciting. us, isn't it, yeah. Dina? Yeah. <laughs> it takes very little to get us excited though. It does, it does. We're very excitable, but the word of God is so exciting. Yeah, and so we're gonna continue on in Mark chapter three. So Dina, would you pray for us as we get going? And we're gonna do Mark chapter three, verses yes. one through 19 today. Yes, I would love to. Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you for your word. We thank you that it's exciting, that it's fresh, that it's new. Every single time we look at it, Lord, you speak to us, Lord. And we invite you right now to come and help us to have ears that hear and listen and learn more from your word today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so we're looking at Mark 3, verse 1. Jesus went into the synagogue again and noticed a man with a deformed hand. Since it was the Sabbath, Jesus' enemies watched him closely. If he healed the man's hand, they planned to accuse him of working on the Sabbath. Jesus said to the man with the deformed hand, come and stand in front of everyone. Then he turned to his critics and asked, does the law permit good deeds on the Sabbath or is it a day for doing evil? Is it a day to save life or to destroy it? But they wouldn't answer him. He looked around at them angrily and was deeply saddened by their hard hearts. Then he said to the man, hold out your hand. So the man held out his hand and it was restored. At once, the Pharisees went away and met with the supporters of Herod to plot how to kill Jesus. Picking up in verse seven, Jesus withdrew with his disciples to the lake and a large crowd from Galilee followed. When they heard all that he was doing, many people came to him from Judea, Jerusalem, Idumea, and the regions across the Jordan and around Tyre and Sidon. Because of the crowds, he told his disciples to have a small boat ready for him to keep the people from, the, from crowding him. For he had healed so many that those with diseases were pushing forward to touch him. Whenever the evil spirits saw him, they fell down before him and cried out, you are the son of God. He gave them strict orders not to tell others about him. Jesus went up on a mountainside and called to him those he wanted, and they came to him. He appointed 12 that they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach and have the authority to drive out demons. These are the 12 he appointed, Simon, to whom he gave the name Peter, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. To them, he gave the names Bonargis, which means sons of thunder. Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. Mm. Oh, that'd be a horrible way to be remembered in scripture, yep. right? Yep. Judas. Oh. Poor Judas. That's the way it is all the time. Judas who betrayed him. No, it's oh. like, that's not how you want to your so name. as we're reading this, Dina, and as you've been reading this through the week, what were some of the things that jumped out to you? Well, I just... The first thing that I saw was right in Mark 3, verses 1, where it says, Jesus went to the synagogue again and noticed a man with a deformed hand. So here's Jesus, and he's he just notices. He sees. Mm. He's aware. Like, he notices this man, right? And, like, I just think to myself, like, Jesus sees. Yes. He maybe you think he can't see, right? Here's this man who's he's got a deformed hand. He's in the Sabbath. He probably goes there every Sabbath to hear yes. and listen, hoping for some kind of healing or hoping for someone to notice him, maybe to help him in some way, shape, or form. And then here comes Jesus and he's like, he notices him. Mm. He's, out of everybody else, he focuses on that man with the deformed hand. Mm -hmm. You know, not the ones who had it all perfectly put together and who had, you know, their prayer beads and they were there ready to worship yeah. him, right? Yeah. He yeah. saw the man who had a need and he noticed him. Mm. Then I noticed as we go down, then it says, his enemies watched him closely. Mm -hmm. So then we have other people who are watching, right? So Jesus is noticing because Jesus cares and wants to, to heal and love and show compassion, right? And then he's got his enemies who are noticing close, they're watching closely because and they want to catch him in something. Yes, that's you know? so good, Dina, because like you think, you think, you know, one, I love that. You see the heart of Jesus, right? Oh. He sees, but there's always people in need and there's always people watching you. Yes. Yeah. Always. And what I love about it is Jesus, again, he doesn't care. He is not here to please the mm -hmm. crowds. And this is something I need to hear. 
Like Jesus mm. does what he needs to do, regardless of what people say. And what does he do to this man when he sees him? He doesn't go, hey, meet me out back in like five minutes. I'll heal your hand. And nobody needs to know anything, right? right. Um, like we can just do it in secret so that I don't get all like, you know, people want to kill me and stuff. Because this is what Jesus knows is going to happen, right? Yes. No, what does he do? Right? He says, come up here in front yeah. of everybody. Like, yeah. I'm going to draw the attention to you and to your hand. And yeah. we're going to heal it right now. And I'm going to make a point. I'm yes. making a point to say to my enemies who are watching me closely, yes, I'm here about the father's business. And yes. I like it. I'm sorry, but yeah. I'm not going to apologize yeah. for doing the will of God, you know? And yes. often you feel like as believers, like, I don't want anybody to say anything bad about me, but I'm like, if we're in the will of God, we need to do what God has called us to do, whether it's popular or not. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And I think like, remember Mark too, mm -hmm. you know, they're in the synagogue and they're trying to capture Jesus anyway. Oh. Or remember they saw his disciples, they're like walking through the fields and they pick the heads of yes. the grain. And they're like, oh, you're harvesting crops on the Sabbath, right? And so they're trying to trap Jesus. And so now this is a continuation. Remember yeah. the original text doesn't have chapters and verses. Yeah. We have that, you know, for reference yeah. and easy, ease of finding things. So now we've continued in the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. You know, they've already accused Jesus now of harvesting on the Sabbath. And, and the whole idea that Jesus is talking to them in Mark 2 is about the purpose of the Sabbath. He's like, the right. Sabbath was made for men, not men for the Sabbath. And that happens again here, right? So Jesus is calling people back again to the purpose of the law. The purpose of the law was actually to bring understanding and identity and freedom, not bondage. Right. And um, uh, yeah, you know, what's crazy to me. Can you imagine seeing this scene? I can't Sometimes imagine. Sometimes he stretches like out his hand and as he stretches out his hand. Right. Whoa. It's healed. I know. And they're angry. And they're angry at him. They're, they're angry. angry. But they're, they're not angry. angry because of what happened. They're, I think they're angry more so because, because Jesus made them kind of look foolish. Yes. Because, because he, they, yeah. he asked them this direct mm -hmm. question. And notice they couldn't answer it. They yeah. had no answer for Jesus. They were quiet. They yeah. were quiet, which probably got them even more upset because, mm -hmm. you know, they're probably kicking themselves later going, why didn't we say something? Because you had nothing to say, you couldn't argue mm -hmm. with Jesus. And I'll tell you what, that's a really good strategy. You see this all the time in, in Jesus's ministries. He asks questions. Yes. I think sometimes we're very quick to like make mm -hmm. accusations. We're yeah. very quick to um, accuse. Yeah. We're very quick to like um, defend, yes. right? Like to argue our point. I need to get my point across. And what is Jesus doing? He just asks a question. Yeah. That is a great tactic like for, you know, whether we're looking at bringing people, hey, so tell me about your story. You know, what's your life like? Like getting to know people and to like start a journey where maybe the Lord's opening a door where you can share Christ or people who are very argumentative, yeah. you know? Or how about this? If you have a problem with someone, ask a question rather yeah. than accuse. I got a question for you. Yep. Yeah. And it's true. What stood out to me was that, that verse, verse five where it says, where Jesus says, stretch out your hand. You know, and, and, and I think of like, um, you know, Jesus is demonstrating his kingdom. He's always trying to show wow. people about his kingdom. It reminds me of that passage in first Corinthians where Paul tells the Corinthian church, he's like, for the, he says, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, mm. but power. Yeah. And the Pharisees very much were all about talk. It's the law and it's yeah. this and it's that. And we're going to talk, 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 talk our way, which is the way it had been done. So we don't necessarily always want to criticize that because that was the way it was done. But Jesus is saying, let me show you something yeah. new. The kingdom of God is here and I'm going to demonstrate it with power. Yeah. That's very convicting yeah. as Christians that we should know it is the power of God. Yes. It is the power of God. That is yeah. the testimony of the spirit and Jesus Christ in our lives, not yeah. necessarily arguing, not necessarily um, that, that legalism. So yeah, because Jesus didn't say anything. He didn't yeah. do a special little potion yes. thing over the hand. He yes. just said, stretch it out. And it was by that power that he was yeah. able to feel it, not by his magical words. Absolutely. It's Absolutely. Spirit, you know, that is moving and yes that's the word it testified yeah it was so it's so it's such a cool picture yeah. of the heart of jesus right yeah. how he, he said like he sees jesus yeah. sees he just sees. And, 
and then his kingdom. And he's yeah. like, yeah, this is what my kingdom's about. It's about restoring the things that That's are right. broken. That's right. It's and I see restoration. Those right. I see those things. And Jesus wants to heal those things. Yes. And, um, and you know, what I love too, is that he went into the synagogue again. So even yeah. of course, and like he was like, he wasn't kind of, you know, put off by the fact that the first time didn't go well. He was like, this is where I'm going to, I'm called to be. And I'm going to be back here again. Yes. You're not going to like get, you know, just discourage, discourage me from being yeah. like, I'm, I'm going to keep going where I need to be. I'm going to keep doing going. it. Yeah, yeah. You're not going to keep me away from my father's house. And then we go and he goes out to the lake with his disciples. Right. Yeah. And we've got this crowd following him. What did you see here back at that? Well, I love, um, I, I looked at verse eight and I underlined that it says when they heard all that he was doing, so this is all the crowds and the people, when they heard all that he was doing, many people came to him from all these different areas. I read a book recently and, um, you know, it was very convicting. It said, you know, often Christians were known for um, uh, what we're against rather than what we're mm -hmm. for. Yeah. You know, like if you ask uh, the the world and onlookers, it's like, tell me, you know, what is Christians? Oh, they're against this and they don't do this and yeah. they think this is wrong. And 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 we're known more for what we're against. And I look at this picture and it's like they heard what Jesus was doing, like the testimony of who he was about. He's about healing. He's about helping. He's about loving. He's about giving time. And because they knew what Jesus is about, they followed him. Yeah. It, you know, and I just love that the Pharisees were known for holding down the law of do's and don'ts and shaking their fingers, shaking their fingers all the time and accusing. And Jesus yeah. was like, no, no, no. I'm going to show you what I'm about. This is my kingdom. Be healed. Be yeah. well. People set free from demon possession. And, and I love that image. They, they highlighted a lot, actually, in the book of Mark, demon possession, because mm -hmm. it's Jesus trumping. Yeah. It's, it's him yeah. saying my kingdom trumps everything it trumps the brokenness of this world stretch out your hand it's going to be healed right. you're sick i'm going to heal you my kingdom and my kingdom trumps the devil's kingdom that's the right. kingdom of darkness my mm -hmm. kingdom trumps everything and that's yeah. what jesus shows us here i and love it demons were afraid of him like they were like yes. shrieking and they were like they they and they knew who jesus was they're like please leave us son of god what mm -hmm. don't bother us right i mean we see that time and time again but they understand they saw the authority that jesus had yeah, doesn't that remind you of um, that passage where it talks about, you know, for our battle is not against flesh, yeah. and, flesh and blood, right? But it's a, yeah. against the powers and principalities of darkness. So that idea, that understanding that we are operating, we live in a physical world, but we are actually operating in a spiritual world. So we need to be in tune with what's happening in the spiritual world in, or in order to be able to speak into it, in yeah. order to be able to walk in the spirit and overcome it. And I think so often what happens to us is instead of like realizing who the true enemy is, Becca, we get really frustrated with one another and we, uh, we just focus on the person mm -hmm. and what they feel like they're doing to us or the things that they haven't done. And we don't realize that the true battle is with the enemy. Mm -hmm. And so if we can get to that point and see that we can release the person yes. and they go and battle with the, the Satan through prayer and realize that yes. Jesus is already Concrete. Yes. No, I mean, I yeah. think that I, I even just said to Brian yesterday, um, we we're dealing with the situation and, and I was like, you know, the enemy doesn't have to, the devil doesn't have to make atheists out of all of us, atheists or murderers no. or this and that. He just needs to get us angry enough where we turn on each other. Yeah. Picture an army fighting itself and all of their enemies are standing around. They're like, well, okay. Well, it's like that when right, let's go dinner. a house divided will fall, right? Yes. If you're if you're if you're fighting against each other, you're just going to collapse, right? Mm -hmm. That's why it's a civil war. It's horrible, right? Yes. And basically, that's what the enemy just sits around and goes, well, "I'll just wait yep. for that to happen. I can yep. create a little problem here and a little, and they won't mm -hmm. even know what happened, and I'll walk away and go, oh, I don't know.' Right. Which is the importance of going back to Jesus saying, "Ask a question. Ask a question of someone. Hey, help me understand this. Yeah. Help me navigate this. You know, or you know, I was feeling this in this situation. Can you help me walk through yeah. why you said what you said? Or, you know, like we just were so quick to like send, I always think of like the eye rolling emoji. Do you ever use that eye rolling emoji? Oh, no, I don't. I'm like, oh, so-and-so did this. And it's this emoji with the big eye roll. I just like, I'm like, I know. I'm using that eye rolling emoji too much. Because you know what? It's what it's like, it happens, right? And we have to like really fight against that, yes. that temptation to just yes. be very critical and mm -hmm. to be humble instead and say, Lord, search me. Yes. Where am I wrong? And what do I need to like 
look at myself before I try to look at somebody yes. else. Yes, yeah. absolutely. So then so, we come on in our last few minutes, we are looking at this appointing of the disciples. Yeah. Was there anything that jumped out to you in that? Well, I just love the fact that Jesus went up on a mountain mm -hmm. alone. Mm -hmm. And and this was a big decision. He knew who he was going to have to call these. The 12 disciples were, this was a special little group for him. He was going to pour three years into teaching these guys because when he left, they were going to be the ones that began the, the movement, right? To, to carry on his work and to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ, right? Which we all get to be now as well. But because it was such a big decision, he didn't just make it hastily. He went up and he spent time with the Lord talking and praying. And then he was ready to call them. And I just think, like, I love that Jesus just models for us that prayer time. Yes. That I'm going to go off by myself. I don't always do a great job of like really being silent and quiet, but it's a really great thing to just be listening for what God wants instead of always just going and doing, right? Jesus could have said, I'll just pick this guy, that guy. But he waited and he let God lead and guide. Yes. And just like that. Yes. I love that picture of Jesus. It says, like I wrote down, journeying with Jesus is up a mountainside away from the crowds. Yes. You know, and it's like, it's like that book that um, years ago, I taught on it um, a few years ago, Hind seat on high places, and it's the journey with the good shepherd up the steep mountainside with your companions of sorrowing and suffering. Right. You know, and it, and and I think like the journey with Jesus, Jesus is always going to call us away from the crowds. Yep. And up the mountainside with him. Yep. And in the words, I underline the words in my Bible where it says, um, Jesus went up the mountainside and called to him those he wanted. Yeah. And they came and they came and they came to him. I'm like, that Lord, I want to be the person who hears you and who responds. Okay. And you yes. know what? I'm not just going to respond in the easy times. I yeah. will respond and I will go with you up the mountainside. Yeah. yeah. It says, and they came to him. It's just beautiful. Yes. It's like, it's that act of obedience. It's like, it's like when you read in um, Acts where it says, um, Philip was called in and he said, and so he did. And, and so he like, did. And so yes. he did. Like, and he yes. just went, he didn't ask, yep. he didn't wonder what was going to happen. He just yep. went. And you know what happened here? Sometimes I think we wait for Jesus to like impart this great call in our lives. And then we're like, all right, now I will go. No, no, no. He called them up the mountainside. And it wasn't until they came to him up the mountainside that they received their new identity in right. him. And, and they, they still didn't know what that was like. I mean, right. it's a, so much more to like work out into this mm -hmm. relationship with, with Christ, mm -hmm. right? I mean, they, yep. we see, we're going to see how they messed up yeah. and they didn't get it and they ask questions and like mm -hmm. that's the same with us. Like we just need to see that first step yes. of, of obedience and then we yep. like just keep walking. Yes. Walking and being transformed. Yes. Following Jesus yeah. up that mountainside and I wrote, they got their assignment from him then. And it's once we begin walking with Jesus and we'll say, yes, Lord, I'm going to follow you after that. I'm going to separate myself from the crowd in a sense, right? Like, it wouldn't have been easy to be like, hey, listen, I'm just going to manage, you know, all these people down here. We right. got a lot going on here. Just kind of like market. Let's right. market Jesus's name around here. No, Jesus is like, come away with me. Oh, right. And that's where they like got their identity yeah. as disciples there. It's so, it's so yeah. great. It's so and funny. yeah, yeah, I just love it. So well, I think that's a great place to end, Dina. Um, maybe you could pray for us as we, you know, just kind of digest yeah. this first part about knowing the heart of Jesus, yeah. knowing how to love people well and interact in difficult yeah. situations, and then responding to Jesus. Yeah, I love it. Let's pray. Yeah. Lord, yeah. we just thank you so much. First of all, I thank you, Jesus, that you see us. I thank you that you notice, that you know that the, the, the hurts, the places that need to be healed in our lives, Lord. And that you want to do that in our in our in us, Lord. We we ask that we would also be people that see, that have eyes that are open to those around us that are hurting, that we can show love to, that we can be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ to, Lord. We ask that we would be moving out in power yeah. and, and not with talk, Lord, but with with your power, Lord. Mm -hmm. And we let your spirit go ahead of us, and that we would be bold and that we would be kingdom minded. And that we would be having our eyes on, on the spiritual world, Lord, and not on what's here in front of us. Yeah. May that we just see things and be in tune. And Lord, we just pray, Father God, that we would obey. That when yeah. we hear you call us, that we would come. That we would go and be with you on those quiet places, those 
mountaintops where you want to call us to. And we want to be people who obey and yeah. do what you say. And we praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Dina. And thanks, Bye. everyone. And join us for part two of Mark chapter three. Have a great day.